Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be making a compound known as sodium acetate. Now, sodium acetate is has a variety of uses, but my main use for it is actually going to be in making uh, glaci glacial acetic acid, which is essentially just very, very pure acetic acid with no water in it. Now, vinegar is actually acetic acid. This vinegar here is 5% vinegar, or 5% acetic acid by volume. So, um... We're going to be neutralizing this with sodium bicarbonate to form our sodium acetate, which we will, of course, then use in a future video. And we will need to make a fair amount of sodium acetate so we can get a fair amount of the glacial acetic, glacial acetic acid in a future video. So we're going to be using a lot of vinegar. Anyhow, so uh, we're going to start by measuring out several liters of vinegar. Um, I'll be using this beaker, keeping track of exactly how many milli or how many liters I use. Um, and that'll correspond to how many uh, grams of baking soda that we add to that in the neutralization reaction. So I'll measure all that out first, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I ran through the numbers and found that for this 3 liters of 5% uh, acetic acid solution that we have here, um, as I did use 3 liters of the vinegar, we will need approximately 214 grams of sodium bicarbonate, which can simply be bought as baking soda at most stores. Anyhow, so we will now begin this very slow addition of the baking soda, as adding this all in at once would cause a large amount of foaming and this whole thing would overflow everywhere. So we'll be very slowly adding it, with lots of stirring with a glass stir rod or something, until we've added all of our sodium bicarbonate and there's no more fizzing occurring. At that point, we can then take our sodium acetate solution and boil it down to obtain the pure sodium acetate. Now, when we create this, it will be actually in the hydrated form, sodium acetate trihydrate, but we will, we, for future applications, such as making acetic anhydride, or sorry, uh, glacial acetic acid, we will indeed need to fully decompose it so that it is just sodium acetate, the anhydrous form, without any uh, water molecules attached to it. Anyhow, we'll get into that in a moment, I'll slowly add it all, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I boiled everything down in a pot, um, after the reaction, and you can see that my fume hood's cleaned out, mostly, and the glass on the bottom has been removed. This is because when I was adding the baking soda, uh, sodium bicarbonate, I accidentally added a bit too much to the pot, and it foamed over and went everywhere, of course. I kind of suspected that was going to happen. I do recommend doing this outside, but thankfully because I had the glass down, uh, it wasn't too big of a mess and I could easily clean it up. Anyhow, nonetheless, we boiled everything down. Uh, but not to complete dryness. We just did it until there was a thin skin of um, solid that started forming on the surface. This is when we know uh, we know that we've boiled off all of the water because that thin skin on the top is actually sodium acetate, the anhydrous form. Um, most of this right here is actually the trihydrate, um, which actually melts. I'm not sure the melting point, but somewhere around 40 or 50 degrees Celsius, I think. And it melts into a liquid that looks a lot like water. Um, and from that point, it will start to decompose and release its water and form anhydrous sodium acetate, which is what we need for future reactions with this. Anyhow, and at even higher points than that, it will actually decompose furthermore and form insoluble, um, or form sodium carbonate, sorry, which is indeed soluble in water, but um, I believe that's what it decomposes into, nonetheless. Um, so we don't want it to get it to accidentally to the point of decomposition. So what we're going to do is now that we have the uh, trihydrate here, we're going to be taking this, transferring it to a uh, baking sheet or something, and heating it up to probably around 150 degrees Celsius so we can slowly dehydrate it, but not so fast that we accidentally start decomposing into other things which would not be desirable, as we still want pure sodium acetate. Um, anyhow, so I'll go ahead and take this, transfer it to a baking sheet, stick it in the oven at approximately 150 degrees Celsius, and leave it in there until no more uh, liquidy stuff remains, because when you stick this in, this will reliquify into a liquid. As soon as you see that there's no more liquid anywhere, and that it's all turned into a hard powder, then you know if you've dehydrated it all. So I'm going to go ahead, do all that, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so now that it's done boiling down, as we can see, or uh, fully dehydrating, sorry, as you can see, we have 167 grams of decently pure um, calcium acetate, the anhydrous form. Now, because it, like it's kind of chunky and flaky, um, because as the uh, it decomposed and water bu bubbled out of it, it caused a lot of bubbles within the um, uh, sodium acetate. So my assumption would be that because there was water vapor there, it's reabsorbed as it's cooled down and whatnot. And this isn't totally anhydrous. 
it's pretty much, but not totally. And for applications such as making uh, quite pure acetic acid, we do need nearly anhydrous um, sodium acetate. So, what I'm now going to do is go ahead and take this, put it in a magic bullet or something, uh, strictly dedicated to science, and grind this into a super fine powder. Then stick it back on a baking tray and bake it again in the oven, just to drive off that last remaining amount of water. Then I'll weigh it and put it in a uh, airtight container so we can store it until we need it in a future, um, a future reaction, which will hopefully be producing pure acetic acid. So, I'll quickly grind this up, put it back in the oven, dehydrate it for probably two hours, make sure everything's gone, and uh, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so in this one liter Erlenmeyer flask, which I will be doing the reaction in to produce the uh, quite pure acetic acid, um, I've just transferred our product. And as you can see, it looks decently white. It's a bit off-white, but it's pretty white. And we have 152 grams of it here. So it did dehydrate a bit further. And um, yeah, it's, it's a nice flowy powder. And um, that's basically our, our anhydrous sodium acetate uh, that we produced from vinegar and baking soda. So we will be using this in a future video, which I'll be filming immediately after this one, in which we will produce some uh, glacial acetic acid from this. So um, yeah, basically go ahead, get yourself some of this um, sodium acetate so you can make some high purity acetic acid, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Wait, bye.